If you love true crime and dark stories, then you'll love our other podcast, Dark Side of Wikipedia, with new episodes every Monday and Tuesday. He told them that in the year prior to Bundy's move to Utah, she had discovered objects that she couldn't understand in her house and in Bundy's apartment. His items included crutches and a meat cleaver that was never used for cooking. Just search Dark Side of Wikipedia wherever you download podcasts. You know, then this guy gets rich and he has some issues with sexual addiction. Yeah, and control. And, yeah. yeah. The uh, Keith Rainier story. Dark Side of Wikipedia. Press subscribe wherever you download podcasts and don't miss a single episode. It, in some ways, it starts to make things like Jeffrey Dahmer and that look tame, not in terms of, of the brutality of what they, they performed, but in terms of the psychology and manipulation of people. Dark Side of Wikipedia. Available wherever you download podcasts. A family is terrorized when the silence of the outdoors leaves a haunting scar on their emotions. That story and more today on Real Ghost Stories Online. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You're about to enter the world of the unknown, and quite possibly, the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That it is, 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. Write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. And of course, if you uh, want to get access to the largest audio archive of ghost stories ever created... That's what this show has for you when you sign up to uh, support the show at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Get access to the full audio archive of all of our episodes over the last uh, eight years. Uh, more audio ghost stories in one place than any place in history is what you get uh, there. Plus our brand new EPP bonus episodes every single week, exclusively for the supporters of the show. Uh, also our advanced episodes, all of it's commercial free. Again, ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Tony and Todd with you on today's episode and what's going on in your world. Well, uh, something kind of interesting to me, and I, I know, you know we talk ghosts and stuff like that. Uh, history really interests me. Mm -hmm. And because of a situation in my family um, with my father, I've been receiving a lot of old photographs from his family members over the last several weeks. And mm -hmm. so I've been compiling all these great pictures of my dad as a young boy you know, as a young man and all that, trying to piece it all together. But I've been looking through these old, old pictures of like grandpa with his model T and, you know, grandma, yeah. you doing some kind of foxtrot dance out in front of the barn and stuff like that. It's like, it's so weird to look at these pictures and realize those are the people that I knew when they were alive or, or this is my father at age like four. It's like unbelievable. You look at these pictures and they almost come to life to a certain extent, you know? Mm hmm I just love stuff like that. So I'm in the process right now of taking these pictures. I'm going to get them printed out and I'm going to get frames. Now, what I want to do, and this is what I wanted to bring up to you. Yeah. I wanted to go find some old antique frames someplace. Yeah. And, and, but am I bringing something into the house then with these frames that I'm buying at antique stores and stuff? I've done that before. I, I, uh, I've done the frame thing. I've never had any issues, not to say that it, it couldn't happen, but, yeah. um, I, I, I don't know. I, I buy a lot of antiques and I quite honestly have never really had an experience where I thought anything was attached to it. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's up to me because there's ways you can you can go get the antique frames and there's a certain amount of, you know, authentic character that you're going to get out of that, which makes right. it even cooler. But there's, of course, there's reproduction frames. You could probably almost find cheaper, um, although it just kind of depends where you're getting them. Um, and it, you know, you could get the same look and feel out of it. You know, we're fairly close. I, I wouldn't feel too too scared about getting the frames it's the mirrors you have to to worry about <laughs> why is it always the mirrors now i bought I an know. old like 1925 buffet about two years ago okay and i redid the whole thing but the mirror on it and everybody's like oh it's the mirror it's yeah. like what what's the mirror why is it always the mirror i don't is it because they're used 
I mean, mirrors are used in some practices of communicating with the other side. So I don't know if that just like the naturally becomes a thing everybody goes to and they say, oh, it's it's the mirror. I don't know. I mean, people say mirrors hold energy. People and I don't know if that's factual. That's just, you know, people say Um but I, I've never been one that's been super scared of mirrors, but I know several who have. Yeah. Um, so I think it has something to do with our likeness. Like we, uh, it, it reflects the likeness of whatever's in it. Kind of like a camera um, takes the likeness of whatever yeah. is there. So I, and, and I, and I guess I feel the same way about cameras, like old cameras from way back, mm-hmm. you know, maybe there is kind of an energy that's held there, but with this project, I'm going to go for it. And actually what I want to do is I want to create a very freaky wall in my home so that if I ever sell it, <laughs> people can walk past it and get freaked out by the pictures I have up there, you know? <laughs> so it would, it would be like a wall, like that, that is like a fixed to the house. Like it becomes literally a fixture of the building that you put. Yeah. Like, things? like, like if you buy this, you've got to buy this wall. It along comes with, with it. it. Oh God. Yep. And what would be really creepy is, you know, eventually they'd be like, oh, we're going to, you know, they'll paint over it or they'll do something to it. And then somebody later down the, the road, uh, another, you know, 80 years, they're they're taking the paint off or the wallpaper or whatever they do. And they find all these pictures on the wall. And it's I like, bought a house one time and there was a picture kind of like that. It was a wedding picture of a couple up in the attic, mm-hmm. attic, freaky as you know what. And I swear to God, I never touched it. I left it sit in the attic where it always was. But yeah, I mean, to find that stuff, when you renovate houses and stuff, you find weird stuff all the time, but that would be really cool. Like, what is this nose? And then like you're rubbing a little bit more and a couple of eyes show up. That'd be great. Yeah. I uh, I purposely leave weird notes for people <laughs> when I renovate houses. And I, nice. I've done that many a times. Like behind a fireplace, I did the I, like red rum or something <laughs> <laughs> and like red paint. I literally did that. And then when I was putting like vinyl plank flooring down in a basement once, um, I took like charcoal and I wrote on the into the the floor b- below the vinyl plank. It was like something about like like some made up child's name, you know, died here or something. Just very very generic. No one, no name I'd have ever used or knew about. But I'm sure someone will at some point rip that plank up and go, "Oh my god." The karma that will come back to you at that point in life, make sure and stay in touch with me no matter what happens, because when somebody finally does pull it up and they find it and like have a heart attack or something, that karma will come back and get you. I know it. <laughs> That'll happen. Or they'll, they'll like, well, who are the previous owners? And they'll look <laughs> and they'll, 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 they'll in my luck have happened to be some sort of murder around that time with that name that I was unaware of. And they'll be yep. like, what did you know? About? Like, I was just fucking with the people. I don't know. I was just was writing it down one day when I was putting final plank down because i was bored tony's doing the podcast from a jail cell that's how it goes <laughs> look, look i can prove it to you i said it on the podcast the day i did it mark it down mark yeah. it down mark it down yeah 855-853-4802 is our phone number at real ghost stories online to share your real ghost stories with us let's go to our first letter it says hey guys this is my first story that i've shared with you i've been listening to your podcast going on two years now this last October, I had some stories I wanted to share, but had not brought myself to take the time to write them out. But tonight, something happened that I cannot explain, and I feel like this is the push I needed to speak of. I moved back home recently with my husband and our two children to help my stepdad renovate his home and allow us to save some money to buy our own home. He resides in a Native American reservation and is enrolled here in the local tribe. I've never liked living out here as a kid because it's so rural and there is nothing but coyotes, wild horses, and sagebrush. My sister also stays here with us, and we both own Great Par- Great Pyrenees dogs who happen to be litter mates. Sisters who own sisters is what we tell people. We routinely take the dogs outside through the back door of the bathroom for breaks. Tonight, my sister went outside without me as I was still cooking dinner. As her dog was whining to go outside, my sister was not outside more than a minute before she came running back into the house with her dog. My sister told me she felt scared being outside because it was so eerily quiet. She said she'd noticed that she not even the, she said that she noticed that not even the crickets were chirping and she felt very uneasy. She also said that her dog, who is normally docile and timid, was growling at the darker side of the house. A side note, we have floodlights around the house, on the backyard, the driveway, and on the side of the house. The other side of the house is completely dark because we've had issues installing floodlights on that side. I figured my sister was just dramatic when she told me she was scared. 
I know she does not like the dark anyway, so I figured she might have just spooked herself. I finished cooking dinner and grabbed my flashlight and my dog with her leash and let her outside. I did notice it was quiet, but the voice in the back of my head told me to stop and think rationally. I pushed forward, flashed my light around, reaching the area we take the dogs to go to the bathroom. My dog and I got about 25 feet from the house when she started barking profusely up the hill behind the house. I shone my light very quickly up the hill and saw this big black figure towering at least 10 to 11 feet tall. I guessed about that tall because there was a tree between us and the figure in the tree was 12 feet at least. And this thing was maybe a few yards out behind this tree. When I cast my light on the figure, it rapidly moved away from us. This thing moved faster than I've ever seen a living thing, human or animal move. Darted further to the right of the house and disappeared into the darkness. Quickly made my way back to the back door, struggling to wrangle my dog who was still barking and practically choking herself while she lunged forward trying to run towards the figure we both saw. Her behavior confirmed that I did not imagine what I just saw. When I finally drug her close enough to the back door, I pushed her in and quickly shut and locked the door behind me. We cannot make sense of what we saw. This thing made no noise, darted across the property, and it was too tall to be one of the wild horses. I was almost in tears telling my husband what I saw. I was afraid that maybe he would not believe me. I get ridiculous trying to explain what I saw, but he told me he would investigate. He went to the room and grabbed his gun and we both went outside. Each of us had a flashlight. He had his gun and I had my dog to see if maybe she'd sense or see what we saw just minutes earlier. We roamed the property for about 10 minutes, but we did not find anything. We made our way back to the house and I worked on calming myself down. Still struggling with the denial that maybe my eyes are playing a trick on me, my dog's behavior though definitely helped me maintain a grasp that this was not a delusion. The thing that bothered me the most is the thing seemed to be waiting for me because it did not leave when my sister was outside. I took this personally. I've seen many paranormal things in my life, but it's been years since I've experienced anything. I hope you have some insight into what I went through that night or tonight. I've seen shadow figures in the past, but always appeared in more of a human form. This thing had no real shape and was exceptionally large, larger than any shadow being I've ever seen before. Thank you for your time in reading this. I hope to hear your feedback on my experience. What are your thoughts on that, on the shadow person, especially the the size of it? Well, I think that, and, and a lot of times you hear stories and um, about shadow figures, and it seems like they have the ability to kind of present themselves however they want to. They can present themselves as very tall and big and um um, o- overlooking you, they can, I've even heard stories about them, like showing themselves in various geometric shapes and, and things of that nature. So, um, the interesting thing was the, the location of the house. Was it, it was on a, um, a, a native American reservation. Um, see, and that's, that's where I start thinking about stuff like that, because I've also read a lot of reports where native American energies are very, very strong mm-hmm. and present themselves such as such. Um, so I wonder if there's any tie there and I'd like to know what's behind that hill, uh, that she was talking this, this figure was, was near what was behind it was, you know, is it possible that there was some sort of burial ground there or, or something else? Um, a very freaky story. And I walk away going, it's exactly what everybody does. We try to talk ourselves out of what we just experienced. Like, you know, she went in the house and is like, this could never have happened. Mm -hmm. She knows, she knows what she saw. She believes what she experienced. The dog obviously experienced something. So it's, it's, it's always funny how as, as, as humans, the first thing we do is go, ah, it had to be something else. I must be nuts or must be seeing things. And yet, Sounds like there was really something there. I mean, you try to rationalize it, and 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 I see nothing wrong with 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 doing that. But the thing is, some things are just so out there. It's like there is no rational explanation for this. I mean, when else in your life have you seen that sort of a, a figure like that, where you you just couldn't place what the hell it was? It, it made no sense. There's no logical explanation for it. Um, but I think that's a scary and interesting thing with um with the shadow people thing. And I I don't put them all into the same category where, you know, I I don't think it's just shadow people and they all have the same abilities and they're all the exact same. I think sometimes shadow people are Aunt Edna that's coming back and this is just the form that she seems to take is kind of just a shadowy type presence. I think sometimes shadow people could be something that were not human that maybe, you know, that that are 
evil or good. I think sometimes it just seems to come across or that's how it's um, or how we pick up on on the energy is just in kind of this shadow form. But neither are or none of them are, are the same sort of thing. They're all kind of in their own, you know, it's just the way they're coming across, if you will. It's like something if somebody something had a sheet over it. You didn't know what know what it was exactly until you take that sheet off. And it's like, oh, OK, it's a person. Or it's a clans member. One's, you know, just a normal person. One's a crazy clans person. Um, right. You know, <laughs> you know, it's like it, it, it all. Uh, it, it, but neither are the same until you you were able to understand what exactly that is. I still don't know why there's so many stories with hats and shadow people, though. That seems to be one of the more resounding things with shadow people is them having the old top hats on. Well, I wonder if there's maybe some tie in with that, though. Maybe it, it has something to do with... Um I don't know, connecting that type of shadow person. And I agree with you. I think that we might be perceiving something as a shadow person. It may just be trying to manifest. And that's about all it can manifest at that time is, is to come through as, as this dark figure or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I agree. A shadow figure isn't always a, sh a shadow figure. And it probably falls into many, many categories. But the hat, the hat thing is actually kind of interesting. We I've, I've got to dig into that some more. Yeah, I, I have so many questions on the hat thing. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number. Let's go to a caller. Hi, let's hear your ghost story. Hey, Tony Bruski, I'm calling again. I just left a message earlier. Uh, I'm, I'm going to just share one of my stories with you uh, before I go into the other ones. Uh, this happened in Central America. In El Salvador, when the, uh, you know, the countries out there is a little different. And um, my, where my father used to live, where my grandparents' homes is, the restrooms are always like outhouses. They're a little bit, you know, into the forest or, you know, sometimes just, uh, you know, about a fourth of a mile from the house, sometimes even shorter, a sixteenth. But what I'm trying to say is, you know, restrooms are, are kind of like at the other side. Now, you know, in, in modern days now, they have the restrooms more more close to the house, you know, or inside, like regular houses, you know. So during the time, the last time that I went over there, I was probably 12, 13. And I remember when I was coming out, out of the house and I, I needed to use the restroom. So... My aunt's house is literally right behind my grandparents' house, and right next to us is my dad's house. So I went to uh, I went to my aunt's house to tell my cousin if he can join me to go to the restroom because I was scared, and you know I didn't I didn't want to fall or you know anything anything to happen. But uh, it wasn't that that serious that crucial. So when I went to go ask him, my cousin laughed and he's like, "Man, you're all right, man. You don't gotta be scared." And I was like, well, no, nah, I mean, I'm not used to this. So he joined me to the restroom. And literally, the restroom is, like, downhill from where we're at. So it's closer to their house, you know. So they're, they're used to it, you know. They grew up over there. And I remember going into the restroom and, you know, handling my business and whatnot. And my, my cousin was on the other stall, the other outhouse next to me. And I remember that I finished first. And my cousin told me, hey, don't leave me with myself. And I started laughing, you know, and I'm like, I thought you weren't scared. He's like, nah, hey, I joined you, you know, so you're the one that wanted to come out here. So I'm using the restroom now because, you know, you, you came and got me and whatnot. So during that moment, man, it, it was it was a weird feeling that I got. I, I didn't get it right away as soon as I stepped out. You know, it was it was kind of slow. It, it started with the wind. You know, the wind started blowing in the beginning. And then all of a sudden the wind stops, man. It like it gets super still. And then I hear I don't hear the crickets. I don't hear the little animals that run run around like, you know, rabbits or any type of animal. It just gets dead silence out of nowhere. And I I grew up with a with a family that hunts, you know. They hunt over there where we're from and we we know that whenever the the forest gets dead silent, it's because there's a predator around. But I I told myself what predator could be around, you know, that could really kill us out there, or that can kill me. We don't have bears over there. We don't have any mountain lions or stuff like that. The most that I can think about is a jaguar, and 
those animals are rarely seen in the jungles like they used to be seen back in the days, you know, when when there was not there was no poachers, no uh, no zoos and stuff like that. So my first thought wasn't, you know, wasn't nothing else but like, hey, there's something here. My, my, my grandpa always told me when you feel that the forest gets still, it's because there's an animal there. There's a predator. Something is, is, is you know, looking for, for prey. So I'm not going to lie. I got kind of nervous, but those weren't my first thoughts, you know, like, it, I come to think that now, now that I'm older, I'm like, yo, you know, that's what it was. It was something that was there. And I remember, man, like I was in front of a tree that was right next to the stall. And I remember looking up. But before I looked up, I I, I had this smell, man. Like it was a, it was like a, a very funky smell. It wasn't that. It wasn't that good, you know. You could tell that smell wasn't normal, and I, I can't explain it. There's this, there's this, uh, this flower over there that's called the flower of the dead, and it releases this smell that that it's it's horrible. It's like it literally smells like like a dead person, like that. And when I looked up, I remember seeing these two big red eyes looking right at me. And see, when I when I tell my father this story, he he kind of chuckles because he seen he seen what I've seen before. But in the beginning, he would try to like try to get my mind off of it and be like, "Well, man, you probably saw an owl or something, or you you probably saw an animal that was on top of the tree." And I'm like, "No, man, this thing was huge. This thing was it, it was like a shadow being." But, but I can't explain it. It was it, it was like a beast, and it was crouching down, looking right at me. And I could hear it snarling, you know, like like it was it was just looking at me. It was observing me. It it wasn't trying to hurt me because if it really wanted to hurt me, it would have done it right there and then, and it didn't. It just kept looking at me, and the eyes it, it glowed like like a like a fiery red, not a normal red, not like a normal red color. It was a fiery red, I remember. And I I couldn't really tell the face or how it looked other than the eyes, but by by the way the eye movement was moving, I could tell that it smiled at me. It gave me a smirk. You know when you smile your eyes they, they go, you know, on each direction, they go up and stuff. Well, that's what I saw with his eyes and I could tell that it was smirking at me. By this moment I was frozen. I didn't know what to do. I even tried to let out a scream and I couldn't scream. I was just flop. I couldn't do nothing. And I remember that when I snapped, when I snapped out of it, my cousin was still in the restroom. I left him. I ran. I ran uphill. Because remember, I told you that where my where my aunt lives is the restroom is literally downhill. And you know, it's it's crazy, man, because. When I ran, when I ran up to the the hill towards my grandma's house to get back in, it started to rain. And in that moment, when it started to rain, I slipped and I fell right in the front of my, uh, in the front of the back of the back door of my grandma's house. And when I hit my knees on the floor, I literally busted them. Like I, I cut myself. And I remember. When I got up, it was a clear imprint that maybe it has nothing to do with what happened that night, but I I kind of believe it does. When I fell on both knees and I saw the blood coming out, I got scared, man. Like, it just, it freaked me out. You know, I felt like, like it pushed me, but it was, I think I think it was just for me slipping that it happened, you know? Like, at this point, my imagination is running wild because I couldn't believe what I just saw. I saw it with my own two eyes, and when I got up and they, you know, my my auntie came out out of my grandma's house. She started cleaning me and whatnot, you know. She called my grandma and she was asking me what happened, and I couldn't speak. I was a mute for a while. for that one night. I was a, I was mute, and when they were cleaning my wound, 
one of my aunties told me, he's all like, wow, was like you really cut yourself pretty bad and your cut looks like an R in one knee and then a V on the other knee. To this day, I don't know what that means or if it had something to do with me, you know, and that creature that I saw. But I remember that very clearly that I had an R in one knee and then a V cut into me. You know, maybe it was coincidence. I don't know. But uh, the next the next morning, because of the fright that I had, my grandma actually took me to church. And uh, when she she took me to church, I remember the the priest saying some prayers, because where we're from is predominantly Catholic. So I remember go, going up there, right, and and the the priest started putting uh, this oil on, on my forehead and saying these prayers and. I got, you know, I felt a little better. Uh, I felt a lot more comfortable. And he asked me what I had seen. And, you know, it it was like something was lifted from me. And I, I was able to speak. And I told him, and my grandmother was there. My grandfather was there. My grandfather, uh, he has a, a history in, in our town. My, my grandfather was actually part of the Jesuit movement, I believe. Because when he was, uh, when... When he was, you know, uh, how you say, when they, when he had his funeral, he passed away a couple of years back, like four years, I believe. And when that funeral happened, uh, I seen that he had uh, the Jesuit symbol over his coffin. So I'm guessing that's what it was. And that's when I found out that my grandpa actually knew Latin and he knew how to exercise demons. So... You know, thinking back at all this, I'm like, the, my family has a history with, with these type of beings, you know? Like, my grandpa, when he found out the story that, that had happened to me, what, the, what I had told him, what I had seen, he told me, son, you, you, you really need to be careful and you need to pray. You need to pray every day and every night. Remember that, that God is real. He would always instill those, those thoughts into me. And he started telling me that when my father was young, he used to see that same shadow beast that I saw. But my father would try to fight it. And it's funny because my, you know, my father, my father to now, he tells me about this. And he says that when he used to see it in the, in the jungles, he would get like a, a slingshot and some rocks. And he said that, that uh, somebody told him that if he spits at the rocks and makes a cross with his spit on the rocks and shoots it at this beast, he could probably hurt it. And my father laughs at that now, but he, he, he tells me, he's all like, I used to see that, and I would shoot at it, and I would see the shadow just move from tree to tree, and you could see the tree just moving. So I asked myself, what is this, you know? Obviously, we don't have large apes you know, in, in, in Central America that we know about. There's there's a there's a myth there's a, a myth called El El Sisimiste. And that's where his uh, his call does cut out, but he could probably go on for years because he's got so many stories. But it was interesting. There was a lot a lot to unpack in that call. Uh, of all the things that uh, that he experienced. I don't even know where to begin, but I, I will say this. I, I observed this right away, and I think this is the first episode where we had this kind of weird coincidence things happen with, with you on the show, Todd. But I, I, there's this weird thing where I, I the first, whatever the topic is, we don't really pick topics for the show, but they almost kind of come to us on the episode without ever it being decided. Uh, so the first letter that we had was talking about all the animals going silent in the forest, the crickets going silent. And I noticed at the front of his call, he said the same thing was happening. So and I actually named the episode prior to even hearing that phone call, The Quiet. And I didn't I didn't and I didn't I did not pick that phone call for the show. I just have a big old bank of phone calls and I just kind of randomly grab them for time of whatever makes sense. Uh, and it's just kind of one of those things where the show I can I've lost track the amount of episodes where it's ended up having like a theme where if you tried to put it t together, it, it couldn't be done that well. But it just seems to happen anyway. Go ahead. And, and you, like you said, just a, a lot to unpack on that one. When you hear the story and he starts describing kind of what he's feeling and and what he's experiencing and stuff and you think about. 
you know, could it be a werewolf? Could it be some sort of demon? You know, is it an alien? Mm -hmm. Um, Chupacabra came to mind, to be honest with you, because there's a big legend of that. And then, of course, at the very end, he mentioned something I was going to look up that I didn't get a chance to catch there. But, you know, and and, and his father and his grandfather experienced this as well. Mm -hmm. So it's like you, you talk about ghosts and energies and all that kind of stuff. And then I just think there's so many layers that we just don't know in our lives. Like we take a lot for granted that what we see is 100 percent real. And everything we can't see doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's where we make a mistake as human beings is there's a lot of stuff that exists that we have no idea about. What was this thing with the red eyes that seemed to be smiling back at him and watching him? That's sure. freaky. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, yeah, you're exactly right. There, there's so many things that are unseen that certainly exist. I was thinking of that the other day. I was uh, I was out working on some stuff in, in the barn. There you go. A sentence you never thought you'd hear me say. <laughs> I was actually shoveling stalls in my barn. Another oh my thing gosh. you never thought you'd hear me say. Um, but I was doing that, and I have a Bluetooth speaker out there. And I was just playing music from my phone directly to the Bluetooth speaker. And when I was doing it, I was just, I was just reminiscing and thinking of the old days of downloading mp3s or this and that and you'd play it directly on the device and i was just thinking you know this is so interesting this thing isn't even like there's no physical cord connecting that speaker on the other side of the barn it's being broadcast out of my phone over to there in such crystal clear sound and it's like it's just kind of amazing to me. I mean, I know like the half of the listeners are like, that's how the world has always worked. No, it hasn't. <laughs> this is this is not that old. And I'm just I just I'm, I'm, I kind of get amazed by some of these things of just what is there that we're not seeing that it's able to transmit. And I know it's some sort of radio wave or whatnot. But I mean, with that being there, why, you know, with people just accepting things like that as being there, because that's what they are. Others being so quick to dismiss other frequencies and other things that could be coming through that, yes, we don't see them, but we're getting evidence that they're there. I also noticed, like, it seems like the older generations, and when I say older, like my grandfather lived till he was like 98. Mm -hmm. And he lived during a very weird time in this country where, you know, when he was first born, there was no television. There was none of that. By the time he passed away, there were computers and all that kind of stuff. So in a very short period of time, you know, things that had made progression. And yet I remember his generation believed in things like witches and spooks, basically, and all that kind of stuff. And I wonder, as we get more technologically informed in our lives, if we kind of push all that other stuff away, because it's it's easy for us to say, well, there's no such thing. And yet... You hear stories like this. This kid, when he was young, where it was good thing he went to the bathroom ahead of time because yeah. I think he probably would have went at that point. Um, you know, he experienced something that he will never forget. Another thought on that is, or are we going to swing back the other way and society as a whole will be more accepting of those things as they once were? And it's not so much a pushback on it. it it's it's it just kind of makes a revival because of all the information that's out there and people having the ability to, to discover it, to find interest in it, to believe in it. Whereas for a good chunk of time there, unless your family was into that uh, or you had a grandfather or somebody who had these beliefs, you know, the kids probably didn't talk about it too much because they didn't want to be like their parents or their grandparents. And now that all the information is out there, you don't necessarily need to hear the stories from grandpa uh, or, or grandma or whatever. It, you can find it other places. Will that kind of have a, have a renaissance, if you will, of, uh, of of the beliefs in those areas? I think so. And also, because we're becoming more technologically informed, I think we're getting more evidence of actual stuff. We actually yep. have the ability to see things. You know, you watch infrared cameras and stuff like that pick up stuff in the woods that doesn't make any sense. We didn't have that technology before. No. So we have technology now. And I think that it's allowing us to actually prove that some of the stuff we heard about way back when may be true. Yeah, I think a lot of it was just completely dismissed. And, uh, you know, you're seeing those things. One of the creepiest things that I see uh, or I have, have had sent to me, I've never seen it myself, is when they use the um, the camera that has like the Xbox eye thing to it that that makes the stick figures. Uh, that to me, it, it's so bizarre. It's like, oh, my God, that is so weird. And it's like and it's moving like with. It's not just like some randomness, you know, it's like it's moving with purpose. Like, yeah, what? I mean, I've seen those before yeah. and, and I, I say to myself, I, I definitely want to get one of those because I think 
by itself, maybe nothing, but again, as a, as a, as a piece of other pieces of equipment and experiences, it could really show something. I have an app on my phone that I think kind of does it. It all depends on the phone that I have the, the latest iPhone model, or maybe it's the last one pre- previous to the latest. Uh, but it has like the three cameras on it where it can sense depth and, and do depth really well. That, which is the same thing that that Xbox camera does. That's why it, it's able to do that. And I have an app that looks like it can kind of do that. I don't know if it does it as well as the the Xbox type camera. And I always forget what it's called, but I think we're going to see even more things on, uh, on our own devices that go well beyond just ghost radar and, and some of those that are trying to pick up words and such. I think we're going to be able to just use our phones in many ways. You know, you want to be a ghost hunter, what used to would have cost, you know, tens of thousands of dollars in equipment. It's just there on the phone. Uh, because of the the level of sensitivity of uh, which it picks up. This yeah, is interesting. I, I'm excited about it. I mean, that to me is very exciting that that can be in the hands of just about anybody. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to go to convince anybody uh, any more of anything, but uh, it'll be interesting to have. I have one other thought on that story when he was talking about the pictures he was finding and, and learning about his grandparents, where you were just talking about your pictures and stuff. Right. That, that you were coming through. Um, I was wondering... Now, uh, what was it like, Todd, when you discovered the picture of your grandfather doing an exorcism? That must have been an odd moment. <laughs> I would, you know what? My grandfather was a little on the odd side, so I <laughs> wouldn't necessarily uh, uh, surprise me that he was part of that. That would be funny. I mean, that would be, talk about those moments where it's like, who are these people? Like, I, I thought I knew them, but what the hell? Yeah, that would yeah. be a, an interesting moment. That's going to wrap up the episode for today. If you like the show, keep us on the air. Become an extra podcast person. EPP at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Get all the bonus content, advanced episodes, uh, new episodes, commercial free. It's all there. Uh, ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Until next time, for Todd, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online.